A common failure in vintage computers is bad dynamic RAM chips. And since original parts aren't manufactured anymore, it's important to have a reliable way to sort out the working ones. I searched online for open source DRAM testers, but when I reviewed the code, I found some issues that can cause good chips to test bad and vice versa. So I wanted to share what I learned to help you build a better DRAM tester. And here's what I came up with. It uses the March C- algorithm, a product of academic research designed to catch real-world DRAM faults. It's efficient, taking just one second to test a 64K RAM. It has read measurement mode to verify that row access time is within spec. And the best part is, all you need is that spare Arduino board that you've got laying around. Hey, I'm Trevor Makes, and welcome to my computer lab. Uh, it's kind of a mess right now. Uh, I've got a few projects going on, and... Well, you know how that goes. The centerpiece right now is this Commodore 64 mainboard. In a previous video, I showed how I built a dead test cartridge, and with that, I diagnosed a fault in either the RAM or the PLA. With Micron 4264 DRAM and an MOS PLA, I figured it was about 50-50, so I got replacements for both. But knowing that the replacement RAM would be recycled parts that could just as well be faulty, I figured it would be a good idea to test everything individually. And my first step was to check out what other people were using for DRAM testing. It turns out there's quite a lot of designs out there, from dedicated DRAM testers to all-in-one microchip testers. But I was most interested in open source designs that I could learn from and improve on. In particular, I found two for Arduino Uno, one by Foztex and the other by ISS along with several dozen others that forked from one of those two and then put kits up for sale. But in reading about these designs, I saw a lot of comments about extending fault coverage with better test algorithms and measuring degradation and access time. This led me to doing some research on how DRAM is actually tested by industry. And it comes down to the ways that chips actually fail in practice. There are some easy cases like a stuck at fault where a given bit always reads back the same value and a transition fault where a given bit can only be flipped from 0 to 1 or vice versa. Simple testers like the projects I mentioned exercise these faults by first writing a pattern of bits, then reading it back, and doing so enough times to cover both 1s and zeros, making sure that none of the bits get stuck. But there are other faults that these tests can miss, like address faults where some addresses get repeated or skipped, and coupling faults where writing to one address can flip the value at a different address. The most complete way to test for these faults is to flip just one bit at a time and then read back every other bit and make sure that none of them changed. This is called GALPAT, short for galloping pattern. But because every bit is tested against every other bit, the algorithm has n squared complexity, meaning that the time taken scales by the square of the size of the DRAM. For a tiny 64 kilobit RAM, this would take a couple hours, which is doable, but modern DRAM in the gigabits would take thousands of years. This is obviously way too slow, but there's a faster way. It's called March C-, and it only requires five reads and five writes at each address, which brings the 64 kilobit RAM down from two hours to just one second. There are two tricks that make it work. The first is to read and write through each pass through RAM, first reading the old value and then writing the new value. This way, address or coupling faults caused by previous writes would show up in later reads, which wouldn't be detected if the read and write were done in different passes. And the second trick is to repeat the test going in the opposite direction. That way, address and coupling faults affecting both later and earlier addresses can both be detected. So, the whole algorithm works like this. You fill the RAM with all zeros, then read zeros while writing ones, and read ones while writing zeros. Then, do the same thing again, but going in the other direction. And finally, read back all zeros. At first glance, it doesn't look too much different from the simple patterns that the other testers are doing. But, by cleverly interleaving the reads and writes, it opens up an entire category of memory faults that the other testers will completely miss. Another detail that caught me by surprise is that DRAM chips like the 4164 have a special wake-up procedure that has to be followed in order for the chip to function correctly. It varies slightly between different manufacturers, but 
Generally, you need to wait 100 microseconds for power to settle and then perform eight refresh cycles. On some data sheets, like AMD's 4164, it's written out clearly in its own section. But in others, like the Micron 4264, it's only mentioned in a footnote, making it very easy to miss. However, skipping this wake-up procedure can cause the first few writes to RAM to become corrupted, and cause an otherwise working chip to appear bad. For example, my Samsung chips worked okay without it, but my Micron chips would intermittently fail. Once I added the wake-up refreshes, those chips now pass every time. Some of the testers that I reviewed did this wake-up procedure and some didn't, so don't be too quick to toss out chips that have failed with one of these other testers. Besides data corruption, another consideration is the access time. See, memory chips are made available in different speed grades, depending on how long it takes for the DRAM to respond to a read request. And different computer designs require a certain grade or faster in order for memory access to work correctly. The memory chips are all actually of the same design, However, manufacturing defects cause some chips to be faster or slower than others. Rather than throwing out the chips that are slower than others, they're instead binned into different grades and then sold off at either a premium or a discount. While it's possible for the defects to get worse over time and cause an otherwise working chip to slip past its original ratings, a more alarming concern with purchasing recycled chips online is with slower DRAM being remarked as faster DRAM. This is where the original markings are sanded off and fake markings are etched on to try to pass the chip off as a more expensive one in order to make more profit. So when diagnosing a problem with DRAM, it's equally important to test the access time as well as the data retention. Accurately measuring the access time requires more circuitry than just the Arduino. But to keep things simple for this iteration, I just added a simple mode that reads back an alternating pattern of ones and zeros in a tight loop. This way, if you trigger an oscilloscope from the RAS line while looking at the data in another channel, it's very simple to measure the access time from the falling edge of RAS to the rising or falling edges of the data line. For example, these Micron 200 nanosecond RAMs actually measure between 120 and 130 nanoseconds, while these Samsung 120 nanosecond RAMs actually measure around 95. In both cases, these are well within their spec and so they check out just fine. Of course, this does require an oscilloscope or logic analyzer, but if you'd be interested in having this measurement built in or have any other features that you'd like to request in a board that you could buy, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. But before I get ahead of myself, let me show you how to build the basic version of the tester yourself. I used an Arduino Nano because I always keep a bunch around, but you could just as well use an Arduino Uno with a protoboard shield. You'll also need a ZIF or some other type of socket, red and green LEDs or one multicolor LED, along with a current limiting resistor, say 300 ohms, a 100 nanofarad bypass capacitor for the DRAM power supply, and a switch or jumper for the mode select input. The wiring is a little more complicated than the other Arduino DRAM testers, with some wires crossing over each other, but only CAS and the lower three address lines need to cross the center line which should keep it from getting too messy. The pin assignment was chosen this way to capitalize on fast port I.O. For example, by assigning the 8-bit row and column address to pins D0 through D7, which corresponds to the microcontroller's port D, it allows me to write the address in a single CPU instruction, rather than writing out each pin individually. These tricks were necessary to get the read and write as fast as possible so that the test runs within the constraints of the DRAM refresh cycle. Essentially, one row needs to be accessed every 15 microseconds, or the DRAM isn't guaranteed to remember the old data. But with fast port I.O., the combined DRAM read and write takes just over 3 microseconds, faster than a digital read function, and safely within the 15 microsecond margin. Pretty slick, huh? For the mode select switch, I use the Arduino's built-in pull-up resistor, so all you need is an SPST switch to either pull the pin to ground or leave it floating. I soldered the switch to a ground rail and cut the copper trace between the legs so one section of the rail can be switched between ground or floating, and then I wired that section to the mode select pin. Then, for the red and green LEDs, I programmed the pins to source current when the LEDs are active, so the anode goes to the Arduino 
Two separate LEDs will work fine, but I used a single multicolor common cathode LED because I happen to have one lying around. A common anode LED would work too, but keep in mind that you would need to modify the code to make the pins go low instead of high. To program the assembled board, you can find the code at my GitHub page. Just check the video description or the comment down below for that link. Rather than using the Arduino tools, I built this project using the Platform.io IDE. And if you need help setting that up, you can check out my other video over here. To use the tester, insert a chip with the power off. Slide the mode select switch open, and then connect the power source. The Arduino's built-in LED will flash three times, and then the green LED will turn on if the test passed. And otherwise, the red LED will turn on when an error is found. The test will continue to run in a loop if you'd like to do a stress test, or you can just disconnect the power as soon as you see a green LED. And then once the power is disconnected, you can remove the chip. To measure access time, insert the chip with the power off, then slide the mode select switch closed before powering on the Arduino. If any errors are detected, the red LED will turn on, but otherwise you'll need an oscilloscope or logic analyzer for this mode to be useful. Connect one probe to the RAS line, Arduino pin A4, and the other to the D out line, Arduino pin D8. Set the trigger to the falling edge of RAS and measure from RAS to the next transition in D out. I'd be really interested to hear from anyone with bad DRAM, and especially with iffy ones that fail intermittently or have slow access time. Please give my tester a shot, or otherwise get in touch about sending me those bad chips. And if you'd be interested in buying this tester as an assembled board or kit, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll get to work on designing a nice board with any other features that you'd like to request. Anyway, it turns out that all of my DRAM chips are working fine and it was just the Commodore's PLA that had gone bad. It now boots with some game cartridges that I have, but not to Commodore Basic. So there are still more lingering issues to sort out. If you'd like to keep following along with the Commodore 64 repair, please subscribe and check out my other videos. And as always, thanks for watching.